Erika was created by Japanese professor Osaka Hiroshi Ishiguro, who has been creating realistic robots of the Geminoid, Kodamoroid, Atenoroid, Atenoroid, and other series for a very long time. Having made a lot of mistakes on past creations, Osaka took into account the experience gained and created a new android that already looks hyper-realistic. The girl has a very real body, although she herself cannot move like people yet. Researchers have significantly improved the robot's speech and provided it with an additional communication capability, which can be described by the term body language. This made Erica more pleasant in communication, which no longer created the feeling that you were talking to a soulless iron. She is able to turn her head to the beat of speech, feel the presence of a person, conduct conversations on a number of simple topics, including answering questions. Interestingly, Erica can already react to nonverbal language. Certain gestures from a person, intonation, behavior, on the basis of which the android corrects its further conversation. Naturally, a certain woodiness does not go anywhere because it is still an imperfect robot. What can Erica do now? For example, to work as a receptionist? Yes, that's what you thought. Harmony is created for this. First of all, its creator, Matt McMullen, went to this creation for 20 years. The girl has a gorgeous figure, can discuss music, art, joke, and generally maintain a fairly intellectual conversation. It is able to remember simple information about its owner, for example, his date of birth, name, and so on. Harmony has a sufficiently developed facial expressions. Blinks, smiles, frowns. But she can't walk on her own since the introduction of this function will make the android fabulously expensive and will not pay for the project at all. It's better to watch the video with Erica once to understand how realistic she is. Who can Harmony work with? She is an ideal companion for a certain type of people who appreciate complete obedience in a companion and easy accessibility. By the way, the company that produces Harmony also produces a male version. But according to the company, this model is not very in demand. Sophia is a humanoid robot in the form of a woman, Gynoid developed by the Hong Kong company Hansen Robotics. It was designed in such a way as to learn and adapt to people's behavior, as well as work with them as a consultant, advisor. Of course, it's a stretch to call Sophia a beauty, but given the small number of such creatures, among others, she is still pretty. Gynoid actively participates in public life, participates together with the creators in scientific conferences, political, and cultural events. And in 2017, she becomes a citizen of Saudi Arabia and the first robot to receive citizenship of any country. Sophia is smart enough. A powerful artificial intelligence built into its body is responsible for this. It can analyze visual information such as faces, facial expressions, movements. The interlocutor can talk to her on preset topics. But the most interesting thing is that Sophia can perfectly imitate up to 60 human emotions, the robot uses speech recognition technology from Alphabet, Google's parent company, and is getting smarter every time. How? Yes, it's just that the software analyzes the conversations with Sophia and corrects further conversations, taking into account the mistakes of the pet. What will Sophia be good at? For example, as a consultant or companion for single people, it would seem that what can you want from a sex robot other than sex? A recent survey of more than 500 men conducted by the owner of the site Sugar Cookie Com, Harriet, showed that the stronger sex expects much more from robots of the future. It is not surprising that 30, 80 of men have taboo sex fantasies that they cannot satisfy with their partners, and 30s of them are shy and lonely. Another thing is surprising. Many, about 1 in 10 respondents claim that they would like to purchase a realistic sex robot with artificial intelligence in order to have an intelligent interlocutor. 15 of respondents want a partner who will never let them down and will never be sad. 1 out of 5 respondents says that a robot will be the one who will always listen to him. And 17 of respondents would like a sex robot with the same interests as them. Maybe men will stop paying attention to women altogether as soon as sex robots appear? A third of the men surveyed claim that they would remain faithful in a relationship with a sex robot. Some believe that creating realistic sex robots encourages emotionless sex. However, Kathy Reisenwitz, editor, 
In Chief of Sex, the state claims the opposite. There are many devices for male masturbation, so why make sex robots look like real women and program them to express human emotions, if not for emotional connection with their owners? So, women risk being left without partners who will prefer a robot who is always cheerful, ready to listen, and have sex. However, perhaps it's for the best. Men who perceive women as an object will get sex robots and satisfy all their desires, and women will stop suffering from such men and trying to prove something to them. I've never slept with a man who would gladly trade me for a sex robot. But such people often insulted me, so I can't wait for such robots to appear so that their owners are too busy and stop writing me stupid messages on the internet. Harmony and similar sex robots are a perfect example of technologies developed in accordance with all sexist and racist parameters. However, this bias is introduced not only on purpose, to make the dolls sell better, but also by accident. This is simply because human culture is filled with hatred, intolerance, and discrimination on various grounds, from age and race to gender and orientation. Joanna Bryson, an artificial intelligence researcher at the University of Bath, recently co-authored a study on implicit bias, the reason why robots adopt the flaws of our behavior through things like human language. For example, based on the output of images on photo stocks, the machine learns to perceive the word doctor as a man and nurse as a woman if the robot receives data on racial and gender oppression, it will assume that the sexist superiority of the white race is an acceptable model of interaction with the world. It seems impossible to eradicate bias in robots without changing human culture entirely, but Bryson is not going away. She believes that we can deal with the bias of artificial intelligence by simply choosing the sources of learning more carefully. It is necessary to create a proven system with great attention to nuances but there may be difficulties with resources and financing. Given the available resources, it is much easier to take information from real and virtual dialogues, but it is very expensive to classify and analyze them manually. There is an abyss of information on the internet. Movie scripts and programs, classical and modern literature, blog posts and news articles, discussions on social networks, and much more. And all this is full of bias against women. In only one of the five films, most of the conversations are conducted by women. Men still own the authorship of most articles in both print and online publications, and social networks are filled with misogyny and insults. Unfortunately, people are more likely to fill the system with negativity than positivity, says Corsi. In the future, you can install a filter that will filter out negative information. However, there may be problems with the principles of installing such a filter. What exactly will it filter out? Will it work against hatred or kill diversity? This does not mean that robots will necessarily become as biased as their creators. We can make them better people. Ken is a Twitter bot. Its creator, clinical psychologist Ren, developed Ken's recurrent neural network based on the work of the robot rights theorist Daniel Estrada.